This is eMarketing 101, and uh, my name is Angela Sasser, and I'll be your presenter. And this is basically just a rundown of different social media sites that I've, I myself have used. I'm a freelance illustrator, mainly in fantasy, and I also do a little bit of leather crafting on the side. So all crafting and illustration together. And uh, I actually went to SCAD for Arts Administration, uh, Masters. Yay, SCAD. Yay, SCAD. <laughs> So I um, kind of have a focus in marketing, and I just I love e-marketing because it's just so great. And I will hopefully tell you why it's so great in this presentation. So thank you for coming. Does anyone need handouts? Everybody's good? All right. Let the epicness begin. So why do you need to be social online? Well, let me tell you. So you can be cool like this kid right here. That's why you need to be social online. Yeah, and he's styling. <laughs> he's styling. But, but, but more seriously, you need to uh, realize that people expect you nowadays to have a website. You know, if you're like, well, hey, I, I draw stuff. Oh, can I look at your art online? And you say, no. You know, it's, people kind of expect you to have an online presence now. And with social media, that makes it a lot easier. So we'll get to that. It's an easy way to build that online presence if you don't have website building knowledge because coding breaks my brain too. I just don't really enjoy it and I'd rather be doing art. So uh, social networks make that a lot easier. It's easy access to you from customers and you, you really got to have that because it, it's just better if your customers can easily communicate with you. Um, it can be fun, you know, there's so many great online artist communities that you can join or in social networks you can talk to a bunch of different artists and meet them. It's like from online relationships can become real life relationships in the non-romantic sense, but in the business sense. <laughs> yes. So the first site I'm going to talk about now is Twitter. And I have to admit that when I first heard about Twitter, I was like, Man, that sounds so lame. What can you really... It's just like, you know, I'm having toast, you know. How useful can that be to go on Twitter? It's true. She was. <laughs> but basically what Twitter is, for those who haven't heard of it, is it's basically you have 140 characters to say something online. So it's like a really small microblog. Microblogging is what it's called. And uh, the other thing you can do on there is follow other users. So you have a stream of... Uh, just microblogging everybody that you follow, and then they can follow you back. And I can actually surf to these sites and show you too if anyone is confused about that. I, I also like it because um, when you're on Twitter, you can chat to people, and if you don't respond, it, it's okay because it's not like instant messaging where you have the group, you have a window, and you have to answer this message, or your friend will hate you forever. You know, it's. Twitter is not as um, instant as instant messaging. So there's not that guilt there if you would rather be working and kind of don't want to have to interact on instant messaging. Next, you have hashtags. So if any of you have been on Twitter already and see the word with the little... Um, it's called a pound sign. What? Pound sign, dear. Thank you, the pound sign. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I did not enough sleep this weekend. The pound sign, it basically creates a, a link. So any post with that hashtag in it will show up. And this is useful because when you go on Twitter, you can create your own hashtags. Like Friday Night Art Dorks is a really popular one. So anyone who posts with Friday Night Art Dorks in their post will show up in this stream with everybody else. So it's a way to like really start a trend. Any questions so far on Twitter? Yes. I, I really, I, I set up a Twitter account for my business. I, I do like it with hashtags. They don't, they don't make sense to me. So yeah. how do you know like what to use? What is to it use like, one? Yeah, is a hashtag like relating to another Twitter or what is, I don't understand. A hashtag can be anything. Like, it can be, it, you, that's the fun of them, is that you can create your own just by putting any random word after the pound sign. So is it kind of like a keyword that people search on? Exactly. So it doesn't, so it doesn't need to be other hashtags that other people are using? It doesn't need to match? Nope, it doesn't have to be pre-existing. Uh, okay. You can even just put hashtag artist, and it'll bring up any post that has hashtag artist in it. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? 
Because I can show you in the action too. Go for it. Yeah, look, let's show you in action. <coughs> action demo. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Do we even have wireless availability uh, here? Oh, oh. Yeah, that's right. Check and see if there's an open network. Let's see if we have an open network. There's I've been oh. conference. Let's see. You'll probably have to we are in the basement. I guess we can't tether with the phone because nobody gets service down here. Yeah. Well, um, well, just trust me that it's awesome. <laughs> and uh, go home tonight and look twitter.com and type in ghetto hurricane names. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> Some people can just create trends like that. A hurricane name slip back. A hurricane name slip back? You got to say the whole thing. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Back to Twitter. Okay. Next page on Twitter. Another cool thing about it is if you have the smartphones, you can get a Twitter app and just text right from your phone, read right from your phone. And that is why it's been so powerful in this modern age. People have been organizing peaceful marches, revolutions. Uh, it's just so easy to communicate with Twitter now because it's so, it's so quick and easy to take with you everywhere. And, yeah, uh, several phone apps. Although the danger is you can get addicted to tweeting too, so you gotta be careful about that. I'm eating toast. Yes, no, <laughs> I'm eating toast posts. Um, the cool thing about Twitter profiles is that you you know you join, you put in your name, you can put in your website, you can put in your interests, and why that's cool is because Twitter will look at your interests and tell people who have similar interests to follow you. So I found so many cool artists just by looking at the, you might like to follow these people. So that's pretty cool. And it also gets you search engine hits. So, and uh, on the handout I've given you guys, there's further reading on, that explains what hashtags are, how to use them, and other handy tips for artists. So you can read more details about Twitter at that link at, to Mashable. So any questions on Twitter before we go any cool experiences with Twitter that you want to share? Get a hurricane name. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I just want to mention just from a purely entertainment value on Twitter, Twitter is a lot like being on you know, at a cocktail party with everybody in the internet. Yes, um, it is. You, know, just, you, you can just watch like, the uh, Midbusters guys and Will Wheaton having an argument about who makes the best ramen noodles. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, I mean, it's a lot of fun to just hang out there, if, uh, besides the uh, social marketing value. But uh, if, you, if you post interesting and original stuff of your own, you'll start getting people following you just to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I, which, I agree. Uh, helps a lot with the marketing. <laughs> I think that's another advantage of having 140 characters to say <laughs> something, is because it, it forces you to cut back and just stick to the point and stick to what is fun and you know it makes all of your posts relevant. I do have a cool Twitter story. Uh, last year we did we had to organize a panel called Mon Monster in an Hour very last minute and uh, I was trying to desperately find artists to come and draw monsters with me so I just put out a call on Twitter and people retweeted it which means they just reposted it and uh, I managed to get a uh, round of all the artists just from talking to friends and talking on Twitter. They're like, hey, I'm going to Dragon Con. I'll come to your panel and help out. So it was pretty cool. And I got to meet a lot of people in person who were on Twitter. So that's my amazing Twitter story. <laughs> and the, uh, the game of telephone works a lot better on Twitter. <laughs> yes. So moving on to the Facebook. Ugh. I know a lot of people have that bleh, reaction bleh, because, um, you know, it's just I didn't want to join Facebook either because it just seems like it was just one of those silly trends. People are not posting relevant information. They're just posting about toast. But uh, I have to admit, now that I've joined it and finally learned what it's about, it's been the core glue of my business. And uh, it started out as a way for college students to organize, 
don't you say anything. <laughs> and uh, now everybody uses it to keep up with their friends and family. And uh, just there are actually different types of accounts. You can start there. There's the personal account, which is what, you know, default, what you get. But there's also a fan page, which you have to start an account first to start the fan page. And what that is, is it's basically a website within Facebook that lets you share videos, it lets you share links. Come on in. I have handouts for you. She doesn't bite much. No, not too much. Only on Tuesdays. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, basically on these pages you can share videos, which is great. I think there's like a one gig video, uh, video size limit. It's also loads a bit faster than YouTube, I noticed. But anyway, videos, you can integrate it with other social media sites. So if you're lazy like me and don't want to post, I am making art on various sites, you can hook your Twitter up with Facebook and it'll auto post anything you say on Twitter to Facebook. And I think uh, on the handout, I linked to a place that says how to do that, I think. If not, you can probably look on Google for a tutorial. But I'm just letting you know that the functionality is there. Um, and again, like I said, the time saving aspect is so great because if you have a lot of work to do and you don't, you wouldn't want to be in the studio, it's best to link up your Facebook with Twitter and Blogger and all of those so you can have it auto post when you do a new blog. And um, <coughs> fan pages versus personal accounts. A fan page is great because it can have an unlimited amount of friends. Unlike a personal account, which I think it's in the thousands, like maybe 10,000. Oh, Only 10,000. How much is it? 5,000? 5, <clears throat> Thank you. And if you really, I know people who have surpassed the 5,000 limit. So if you are just that awesome and don't want a friend limit, get a fan page. Um, the other cool thing about fan pages is on your personal accounts, you, you, um, can't see them if you're not logged in, so casual viewers can't just go to your artwork album and look at it. On a fan page, everyone can come and look at it. So it's the advantage of not having to log in, so you can link everyone directly to it. <coughs> and um, the cool thing is, if you really don't want everybody and their brother knowing all of your personal posts on Facebook, the fan page is a great way to be anonymous. Uh, because if you don't have to have a personal account to start a fan page, you can just start a pseudonym personal account to make the page if you want to be completely anonymous. And I know that's a big worry a lot of people have about Facebook is they just they don't want to everybody to know their personal business or information. So another reason to get a fan page. And there is a link here for bless you for further reading, and it's about. Fan page versus account versus group. I wasn't going to talk about groups, but I guess, you know, I'll go ahead and talk about groups anyway. <coughs> because a uh, group is another thing. I don't use it personally, but a group is basically you can start a private group or a public group. And um, it's just a way to be more interactive than a fan page. But I'm, again, I'm lazy and I don't have time to come and interact that much. So a group is only if you have the time to moderate a bunch of people. Oh, uh, another thing about fan pages, another great advantage is you can have multiple admins. So if you're in a collaborative studio with artists or you have someone who runs your business side, you can have them admin your fan page. So that is also useful. That was a big info dump. So. Are there specific questions about what a fan page is and how it can help you or any experiences people want to share about it? No. We all good? Yes. I've never seen any fan pages before on Facebook, but that's probably because I'm not on Facebook that much. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of wondering how do I start one? Is it pretty easy from the account? Yes, it's pretty <coughs> easy. Um, There's even their FAQ, I think. Yeah, they have a back on it if you look that up. and it, it's. You don't even have to go through an approval process. At least the last yeah. time I did, you don't. You just go to create business page, and it lets you create a custom name. Like mine is Angelic Shade Studio. 
So it just goes facebook.com slash angelic shade studio. And it just keeps you separate from your personal. Keeps you separate. Very handy. Yes. It's, Im sorry. it's important to note that uh, you have to have at least uh, 25 people following you before you get to have that custom name. Oh, that's so true. when you're starting your name, uh, yeah, before you hit that 25 friends. people, you better make sure it's what you want. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the lady in the back. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I do have, have my own uh, design studio, and mm -hmm. I have Facebook fan page that I built for too much. So it's a really nice, simple process. And I've been able to upload images and create portfolios and all of this stuff. So my question is, and I might be outside the scope of this conversation, but I'd like to be able to customize it a bit more. I'm reasonably familiar with code. You know, I can get in there. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if, um, if you had a time if you could discuss that a little bit. Because you, I wasn't sure how to initially, I just wasn't sure how to initially get started. Um, customization, I know there are apps that you can get to create custom landing pages in your profile. But I'm assuming you're talking about visual customization. Yeah. Like if I wanted to, oftentimes, and I'm just give a very simple example, mm -hmm. if I wanted to have a larger image of a pot, for example, uh, they, as I've seen, like the landing page for, you know, Facebook page for business uh, or organization. They have a, actually, their, Facebook is doing this new thing where they have a custom page layout template where it'll be on the left, it'll say, um, it's called like, page profile or super profile oh, okay. and you can go in there and create a big header and create your background. They're integrating that within Facebook and fan pages right now. So it's like a, a green and blue S you'll see on your page. So it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. That's an easier way to do it. But they, there's also CSS if you, you said you weren't afraid of coding. But they have Not CSS. Okay. So, um, I couldn't tell you exactly what the code is for the header but you just look up CSS markup and it should tell you. Okay. Okay. Um, if if you create a fan page off of your personal account, mm -hmm. is there a way like that people will link back to you? You're um, under the moon. If you tag yourself in your pictures, uh, or upload, it'll say uploaded. I think it'll say uploaded by. So you, if you really don't want your name connected to your fan page at all, create a person, another personal account okay. that's a pseudonym. Like a lot of artists I know, they'll do their real name and art. Like Angela Sasser art, and then the fan page will connect only to that. So it helps you to keep it all private. No question. Did you have a question? Oh, I was just going to ask. Uh, I I really dislike the image viewer of Facebook, and so I was, and it keeps getting worse as they update. Yes. I have to agree with that. Yeah, I, I don't so like I, that. I was wondering if there are any instances you know of of uh, uh, fan pages using other you know like linking to images and some other third party site or something like that that we can do to get you know, slightly higher quality resolution for people to look at. Unfortunately, within Facebook. There's not a, there's not another picture view we can default to, but if you want to get around that, just upload it to photo book, uh, photo bucket, bucket, excuse me, photo bucket or Picasa or your preferred image service, and just do a link to it. Okay. Because when you link to that picture, there'll be a thumbnail that's attached to your post link. So that's a good way to, to have people still see the image, but then go somewhere else instead of the crappy flash viewer. Gotcha. And so once you do that, um, is there any way to sort of archive these things in a uh, you know set of thumbnail images somewhere instead of stuff, somebody having to scroll through your entire posting history to look at all the thumbnails and go to the links? You see um, what I'm saying? I know there, that in the Facebook pages on the left, they keep changing the layout, but they do have a link archive where it shows what you've linked to. Oh, okay. Or you can also make a text box or maybe create a tab within your page that has a link to all of, like a list of what, where your pictures are or where your portfolio albums are. Awesome. That might be a good way to do it. Yeah, you could create a portfolio in a portfolio of thumbnails mm -hmm. and then below each thumbnail uh, add in the URL. You know, see That's a good idea. Image, yeah. And so, and I'd recommend Flickr would be great. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Awesome. Uh, are there any other questions about Facebook? Okay.
Now we get on to Blogger. And Blogger is owned by Google. It's also known as Blogspot. And because it's owned by Google, you can integrate it with your Google profile, with Google Plus, with anything Google, which makes it really handy. And YouTube, which is also owned by Google. So that, that's a really big um, advantage of it, is that it's so integratable with everything. Um, if you're not sure what to blog about, because I know that's a big problem for some of us who haven't jumped into blogging yet. Uh, most artists I know chat about art, of course, but they share their works in progress, they share advice with other artists like you know, on marketing or when you're in an artist blog, what do you do? I know that seems like everybody writes about that, but everybody has their own perspective as well. So it's always good to share your experiences. And um, the reason that's good to do is because, again, when your fans or customers come to your website, uh, it's just great to put yourself forth as someone who's willing to share as a teacher, except people just really like that you're open. And also, again, if you're a slow worker like I am, and you don't always have new art to put on your front page, then having a link with your blog posts at least makes it look like you're active in doing something. So art directors like that there's something new on your web page. If it's not art, then a blog post. Just something to show that you're busy. <laughs> um, yes. And uh, reading other blogs, not just write, but read. There's some great blogs out there that help you keep up and up on your industry. And if you don't know who people are in your industry, or you just when you get it, when you're looking for a job, you got to know your companies. You got to know what your competition is. So blogs are a great, a great way to keep up with that lifeblood of the art industry. Oh, um, if you don't like Blogspot, because when you get a blog on Blogger, it'll be like blah 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 dot blogspot dot com. And if you don't like the Blogspot, there's a functionality to put your own domain name. Like, example, mine is blog.angelicshades.com. So you can just customize it instead of going with the dorky blogspot name. Any questions before I move on? Blogs of note. There's a great blog called Art Order. You guys are cool. It's called Art Order, and it's ran by John Trinidad. And he's the art director at Wizards of the Coast. And if you guys don't know Wizards of the Coast, they do Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, they do a lot of cool fantasy stuff. And I'd love to work for those guys. And what they do on the Art Order blog is they run challenges that are written just like, just like they are if you were getting a job with Wizards of the Coast. So they'll be like, this week we want you to draw a drow doing this. And uh, they'll judge that challenge with other art artists in the industry. So you'll be seen by all of these art directors who look and judge the challenges. So great visibility there at Art Order. And it's just fun and gives you a lot of practice at the same time. So get seen. Muddy Colors at Blogspot is ran by a cast of really cool artists that you guys should check out. Like, Dan Dos Santos and Donato Giancola, and uh, they rotate out every now and again to keep it fresh. But these are like top industry pros that come and talk about their processes, they share new work. I mean, it's just a really great blog to read. So Muddy Colors at Blogspot. And I've linked to another article for you guys for further reading from this panel that is uh, about why artists should blog. And I think it also goes into why you shouldn't blog, too. But it's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely good to read more about what you should blog about. And if you don't have any ideas, it gives you more ideas on that. So any notes, any questions about blogging? Oh, did you have a hand up? Just yes. a quick question. Um, sure. As you know, you get further along the process, there's a lot of discussion about the design community about mm -hmm. eventually getting to the point where you get more followers of monetizing the blog. Oh, yes. Meaning that you can actually have advertising. I mean, to me, this seems like if you search <coughs> in in-depth pursuits that you have to, like, abandon your primary profession, you know. But 
almost. So I was wondering if you um, might be able to speak to that. Just Blogging, actually no, that's really good, that's something I should have added to this is that blogging, a way to manage yourself with blogging, because it's easy to get really carried away and be like, I'm going to post Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, because blogging, sometimes the posts take me up to upwards of four hours to compile, especially if there's a lot of research. So you got to try to schedule yourself, like if you, I post once a week to twice a week, and I try to make it the same day of a week just so I know to come back and do it, and make myself do it, and keep up with the blog, because it really does help with your visibility. You can monetize a blog with ads, but I just, I just personally dislike ads and things, but uh, Google will let you put AdWords, like, you know, rotating ads that kind of are tailored for your viewers within the structure of your blog. So you can do that, but I don't know, a lot of people don't like ads, and they block them anyway. So, like with Firefox ad block, a lot of people do block them. So you might, and there's no harm in trying, I guess, if you don't mind it. I would recommend putting it at the bottom <laughs> so it doesn't interfere with your information. So. Does anyone have a cool blog they want to recommend to everybody? Anything cool? Yes. Uh, there's one I like, and it just has like different kind of art and design, just really cool stuff, and it's called uh, CMY Bacon, like CMYK only bacon. <laughs> That's <laughs> um, funny. And it's, and I randomly found it, and there's so much really cool stuff on it. I love it. And he updates like a pretty good amount, so there's always something cool on there. Is it like, mm -hmm. what kind of art is it? Fantasy, or is it everything? It, it's, it's a lot of design sort of stuff. So right. he'll have like, um, like he'll do cool furniture, and he'll have like photography stuff. He'll just have cool artists in general. It's just kind of art and design. Uh, it's really neat. Cool, CM White Bacon. <laughs> is that at Blogspot? Or no, it's, blog just, it's just like um, CM White Bacon, I think .com. Okay, I've cool. bookmarked it so long. I I'll have to check that one out. That sounds, the name alone is just really catchy. I know. <laughs> oh, and that's another thing that a lot of us have trouble with is trying to come up with a title for our blogs. And um, it, it does boil down to personal preference, but just trying to get something catchy, maybe related to your studio name. That's the way I went. I was just like, okay, my studio is Angelic Shades. I'll just be blog on Angelic Shades. <laughs> So you don't have to be like overly creative, <laughs> but it does help. Like CMY Bacon, if you if you have a cool name like that, go for it. <laughs> All right, we're wrapping up the logs. And uh, I actually didn't add Google Plus because it's only just come out, but I I feel like I need to ramble t about that before I get to the end. So um, Google Plus, has anyone gotten into that yet? Yes. A little, yeah. It's I've just started using it too. It's still kind of in beta, but a lot of people are saying that it's turning into a replacement for Facebook, like a cleaner version of Facebook. There's, I don't think there's any ads yet. There's a, there's the games are all hidden in their own stream, so you can disable them completely if you don't want. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Picking turnips in Farmville, you know. Five hundred <laughs> things of picking turnips in Farmville. <laughs> we don't care. Yeah. So it seems pretty smooth right now, and there's also, uh, in Google+, Plus, there's circles. It's kind of like Etsy, if anyone's used Etsy, where you can add artists to your circle. But, so it's basically like, say I want to add a circle with just people who are my fans. and So I can make a circle called, my fans, and when I post to that circle, they, they're the only ones who will see that specialized post tailored for them. So it's really powerful in that you can make private circles and keep the spam away from your other circles. I, I really wish we had internet so I could show you guys this stuff, but it's pretty powerful. Yes? There's a, a gallery site that's something with LinkedIn called Behance.net. It has Behance. a very similar function that I get alerts when someone in my circle posts something new, but not from anything. That's pretty cool. I have to, I have to remember that one. So I've heard of it, but I have not used it yet. So I. You can host a gallery for free. I mean, really? I mean, it customizes your 
picture to fit their template, and they're trying to get to, to they want you to, to pay a fee to, you know, mess with the format and stuff. So but there's like premium options right, to it? Right, there's premium options, but it, it's a free service. Behance. Oh, yeah, you said that's an online portfolio. Behance that? Yes. Uh, yeah, right. you can link it. You oh. can link it to your LinkedIn account so that when you, uh, it'll anyone who's on your friend on LinkedIn can get the same one. Oh, so is it ran by LinkedIn? No, it's a it's, it's all, just partnered. Yeah, kind of partnered. What's the name of that again? B H A N C E. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah. What would you recommend for artists who have to use a monitor? Because I know Facebook and Google Plus are, well, I don't know about Google Plus, but, you know, Facebook and Google Plus, you're supposed to only use your real name, and, you know, if you live in a community or if you, uh, if you have a job that kind of monitors or, or watches out for that kind of thing, because mm -hmm. I know there have been a lot of reports about teachers, you know, posting stuff on their Facebook, even if it isn't art, like it is it's like maybe an opinion they have or something and their students will see it and then they get in trouble at their school or whatever. So, I mean, if an artist has to use a moniker, can they still get on Facebook or get yes. on Google Plus? Because they take those down, I hear. Google Plus does take yeah. the pages down, but I think that is because they are, they're starting a new site just for business names. So I think they're trying to keep it clean right now so people with pseudonym business names can join their other business-oriented network that's coming out. Okay. And they say that's supposed to be up in a few months. I don't believe them, but yeah. <laughs> just keep an eye out for the business sign. But they do take down, if you're using a pseudonym on Google+, Plus, they will take it down. Okay, so Facebook, I'm safe. I don't have Facebook, you are safe. Actually, Google Plus, if it's a good enough moniker that it looks real, mm -hmm. you can get away with it. You can? Yeah. Because okay. I have a few friends who have done that. But it's like, if it looks like it's a real name, then it can count. But if it's, I don't know if Google Plus, but Fake Grimlock didn't get through with that. But yeah. things like that, if it looks like a real name they, and they can't tell. So yeah, I guess it's just, it's you're kind of out if you have a fun name like, Professor Cool Art stuff, you know, it's, <laughs> you can't get through with that, which takes all all the fun, because who wants to be like Joe Smith, you know, so, I don't know, hopefully they'll be less, hmm? hopefully they'll be less uh, strict about it once the business name comes out, but Facebook, you're safe, because I've had friends who've changed names like 20 times, because they've been, they're just like, I don't like that name anymore, I'm going to go to another one, so yes, safe. And fan page, uh, you can. Uh, that's another thing about fan pages. You can create multiple fan pages. So if you are a multifaceted artist and like, see, I do illustration, but I also do leather crafting. I could start another page just for my leather crafting, or um, just for you know any different kind of art that you do. So, stuff. And um, well, I think I kind of. Blitz through all of my topics really super fast. But, uh, I, you gotta do word of mouth too, because in the end, that is the most powerful marketing tool is to go out and talk to people, talk to your friends, because you're gonna trust what a friend says over anybody else first. So, word of mouth, talk to real people every now and again. Why? And just get yourself out there. Like the, the gentleman was handing out flyers before the uh, before the panel. It's good to do that. Just go up and because people, when they see you face to face, they'll see your face and remember you, hopefully. So um, there's something else I wanted to mention to you guys. Mm. Now I can't remember. But basically, if you guys want to check out my website and see how I set up myself, because I, when I did arts administration for SCAD, I did an experiment where I joined these different networks. It's where a lot of the information from this panel comes from. I joined a lot of networks to try and see the effectiveness for how they could affect my business. And um, right out of graduation, after I wrote that thesis on the different e-marketings, I got picked up for a book because they found my images on Google. So um, when you join, another reason to go online 
and share your work online is because these search engines will pick up your website, they'll pick up your images, and a lot of art directors and businesses are searching the web for artists. Yes? Real quick question. Go ahead. Would, um, what do you recommend in terms of uh, driving traffic, so let's say driving traffic to your blog? Driving traffic so, to the blog. Yeah. yeah. I, I have set up, I have my own site, I have portfolio site, I have uh, WordPress, beginning the WordPress blog, also have a portfolio on BPM. So, mm -hmm. so fairly active online, I have my own page, stuff like that. So, but, uh, and all this is linked to the homepage of my portfolio site, my studio. But I just want any recommendation to you for just driving things. I know linking to things, posting on other people's, you know, retweeting, for example, but just any other recommendations you might have. What I do personally is uh, to drive traffic to my blog. When I post a new post, I go to Twitter and put a little summary, like say, put the title of the blog in the Twitter and a summary of what I was talking about in that blog post and, and link to the blog post. So Twitter will grab about like 50 to 100 people and then because Twitter is linked with Facebook for me, it posts to Facebook as well. And a great app on Facebook is uh, Connected Blogs and if you join that you can have it auto post from your blog feed to your Facebook personal account and your fan page. You don't have to do anything, it auto does it for you. So that's uh, Connected Blogs, isn't it? I think you've seen it. Well, it's called Connected Blogs, it's an app. And, um, DeviantArt. DeviantArt, yes. I post, I go to DeviantArt and post. Do you guys know what DeviantArt is, everybody? Anybody not know what DeviantArt is? Okay, DeviantArt, DeviantArt.com is, it's like, I hate to make this comparison, it's like MySpace for artists, except not it's as, not dead. It's not dead. It's, um, Ten times the drama. Yeah, there, there's drama and everything, but it's still just a great place to keep up with instant notifications with artists. And you get a pretty good amount of, like, perks for being a free member, yeah, even, you, you know, without paying. You basically can watch, put other artists on your watch list and see everything new that they do, blog posts, art, everything. Do you have a question? Are there, are there like copyright issues with DeviantArt? I've just heard some yeah. sort of thing. Copyright It makes me nervous. Um, People can steal your art from anywhere in the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. DeviantArt's doing a lot to sort of protect against that, more so than like Photo Bucket or Flickr, mm -hmm. but it, it's still... It can happen. I, mean, I realize anyway. anyone can steal any of your stuff, but I'm, I was more concerned with like CD and art themselves, like um, using it or like. like they actually don't take any or... of um, any of the rights to your images. Okay. The mm -hmm. only reason they would even use it um, would be if you, you won a contest with them, okay. and then they get rights to use it, but they don't get they get rights to like print T-shirts of it, but <coughs> you do not lose rights of it. You can also print okay. T-shirts. You can also use it to promote they yourself. They even let you define uh, your copyright, the type of copyright there is. Like if you want people, if you want to allow people to color your image, you can set the. If you have a copyright notice that comes up under the image that you can customize. So it can be a free license, a reuse license. There's different licenses they let you put a notice about. So they're actually very stickler about that. Okay. But to wrap up your question, DeviantArt. I'll go to DeviantArt and say, this is my blog post and link to it. So all of those, I like blitz across the board and that's how I get views. Actually, what you do is you post about a paragraph or two of your blog that you right. put. And you're like, oh, do you want to read more? You, you Go look at my website. <laughs> yeah, I'm a tease that way. I just put a, a little bit, and then that draws people to the blog. That's another way to draw it all to one place instead of just posting the whole thing everywhere else. You kind of preview it and link to the one place. Yes? Is there anything on social media that you started doing and now don't do because you guys didn't work? My space. <laughs> Let me put the pen down because I'm going to fling it at someone. I just said, um, uh -huh. my, yeah, actually, you're right. I joined <laughs> my, my space was the very first website I joined. And uh, I've got, I just started getting messages like, hey, check out my new album. Hey, you sure are hot. You know, it's like I couldn't stand it anymore. So I, my, my space is, I left it years ago. But the profile is up, but I never check it. 
So Live journal. <laughs> once a site gets so much spam, I just I leave it. Facebook is borderline, but the reason why I stick with Facebook is because you can block certain notifications. Like if you're tired of seeing Farmville, you can go ignore all ignore all requests from Farmville, and uh, it'll just block them all. So that's the power of Facebook is that you can choose what to block and what not to block. So MySpace. Um, I also made the mistake of I'm going to join every fantasy gallery online in existence and try to update all of them. Bad idea to join everything that you can. Uh, I would say join a few places that you are comfortable with and keep those active. Or maybe if you do join those other sites, put up your best work because if you know you're going to abandon that site like a week later, at least your best work is there and getting you hits on Google. So don't overload yourself by thinking you can do every single online art site ever. <laughs> Just try to focus on like three or four. And that's why I only have that many in this presentation. Yes. What other online art sites besides TV and art have you found helpful or particularly high gallery? Another one I started with, I, I know it's it's so dated by now, is Elfwood. It, who has an Elfwood? Raise your hand. Oh, no, I got rid just of mine. nostalgic so, um, thinking about Elfwood? I, I, <laughs> I joined that in high school. It was the very first art community I ever joined. And while I don't update it as actively as I used to in high school, I've heard from art directors, yes, they actually do look at Elfwood and DeviantArt and Epilogue because that's where a lot of younger art fans that they're catering their products to go. So yes, companies do study those websites. Yes. So maybe you talked about it. I came in a few minutes late, but oh, sure. if you ever do a live stream or post videos to YouTube of you actually working? Yes. <laughs> yes, I should add a live stream. See, this is um. I have to apologize because this is the first time I've done this panel, and I thought, oh man, it's going to take me forever to do those other topics. So I didn't. I thought I would get convinced. Yeah, I convinced too much. But to live stream, I actually just started live stream. If you're curious, my live stream name is Angelic Shades. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's so cool because That's they have an integrated then. webcam program that it'll a snag video from your webcam and stream it online. And you can also record whatever you stream on live stream. And uh, it's real, all real time. And there's a chat window where you can chat to people who are in your live stream channel watching you. It's just a great way to get fans there and interacting. You could do like art drawings if you have, you want to announce your winners live if you're doing a giveaway. It's a pretty cool way to use live stream. And um, only thing is, I think they have space limits, but I can't quite remember the exact space limits. They're pretty high though, so uh, they're it's cool. I've seen a lot of people using that. I've used it to show people how to make leather masks. So I've got a few. Um, videos up on doing that. So I, you have the internet speed and the webcam. Go for it. Live stream's been really effective for a lot of the people that I know. And uh, branching off that, YouTube. I can't. I mean, it's just amazing how many people have found me through YouTube just because it's. Everybody goes there when they're bored. It's like oh, <laughs> waiting in line, watch YouTube on my phone. You know. The smartphones are just really changing the industry. But yeah, YouTube, I put everything that I put up on Facebook, my Facebook videos goes to YouTube. So you can put up tutorials. Um, you can even monetize your YouTube with little embedded Google ads. Get some money that way. Um, you can also make montages of your work. Yes, there are video <laughs> portfolios. And you can use some simple video editing programs. Photoshop even does animation. If you go into the view panel and go to animation panel, you can do simple animations in Photoshop. And then use the program to convert that to a video. There's, on the Mac, there's the, um, the, what is it called, iVideo? iChat. I, no, not iChat, the video. iMovie. Oh, iMovie. I thought you were talking, you were talking about the chat program. <laughs> um, I think I've heard it's really, really good for simple videos. Oh, it'll do automatic. They're like, do you want to do a slideshow? You can dump all your images in there and automatically make a slideshow for you. So that is cool. 
And uh, I personally use this crappy program that came with my camera because it's the only thing that my camera files will be open in. So. I'm trying to get you off that for years now. Yeah. Anybody else have any good recommendations for video editing programs? Anybody? Um. Yeah. There's. A, I wish I could. Rem I can't remember the dang name of the ones I got, but uh, <laughs> there's a. It's iMovie, and there's iMovie. another one that uh, HDU or something like that. Uh, for Mac, um, it's the high definition version of it, um, but they they make another one. Um, but it really does very well for uh, splicing video screenshots. What's called and HDU? Other yeah, it's like HD, the letter U. Um, mm -hmm. I'll have to check it again, but you just have to look up Mac video editing software <laughs> for free. Back oh. there and then back there. What was your question? Uh, they released a new version of Final Cut. Premiere. I've tried to use it, but I know there's so many panels like it, yeah. but I know it's powerful, so I'm going to keep trying to learn how to use that one. Whichever one you like to look at, <laughs> yeah. that's the one you use. Um, I guess I'll... What was I, your just, question? My, I was just wondering if you used Etsy at all. Uh, do you have your experience for that? Yes, mm -hmm. Etsy. Etsy is for crafters. It's a crafting market, but you, if you're an artist and you sell originals, you can still go on Etsy. And um, sell your work, you can sell your prints. Uh, any products that have art on them, you can sell those too. So Etsy is, is gets a lot of views. Uh, I've, every other craft site I've joined, they just don't get the press that Etsy does. So I re really recommend that for those of you who are into the crafting market or just want to sell your original artwork. Etsy is E-T-S-Y dot com. And they've also integrated this whole functionality where you can add people to your circle, just like in Google+. Plus. So it's really powerful in that you add someone to your circle, you can see what cool stuff that they're favoriting or their favorite shops. So it keeps the recommendations going to everyone that sees your products. It's really cool. Yes? Have you used felt and water? I'm sorry? Are you familiar with felt and water? Just along the same lines. I have not they heard of that. similar in, in approach to Etsy and allows you to sell fine art crafts. It's called, spell it for us. Felt and wire. Like F-E-L-T, felt mm -hmm. and wire. Felt and wire. Yeah. That sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard about it uh, through our local design organization. Uh, we, were selling, we were selling work on it. Do you, um, if, do you mind sharing how much you sold on there? Or how, is there like a monthly? I don't know that we have sold that much. But mm -hmm. I know that Help Wire is a nationally, internationally known uh, site for doing it. So just, just something else to explore. I'm just curious if you had experience. I have not. And I have to wonder now do they let you import your items from Etsy? Because a lot of sites will let you do that now. I don't know if it has that level of functionality, but it very well might. I mean, it's supposed to be fairly well built up, fairly robust. Mm -hmm. I know the trade route is being run by Beer. I think, you know, beer, the, the huge type foundry, beer, they, they sell uh, beautiful high-end stock images, they sell fonts, beer.com. Spell that one for us. B-E-E-R. -E -E I have not heard of that. a resource for uh, designers. Uh, That's beer awesome. One, yeah, they sell type, they sell I mean, typefaces, photography, images. I think beer runs about more. So, I have to check that out. Well built out. It's fairly robust. See, I love I love stuff like this. Comparing, there's always something new coming out online. You were, yours was the first hand I saw, and then we'll come back to the front. Uh, I'm working with a friend on some self publishing for fantasy fiction. I'm just wondering if anybody has suggestions on places for free or low cost artwork to enhance the, the website. Free or low cost artwork. 
I'll do low cost artwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the gold reward is huge. Free low cost artwork. I'm gonna say that I know DeviantArt does have a stock resource section, but that's more photos and um, they they have like patterns and graphics. Are you talking about like character based art or like At this point, objects? I don't even know yet. We're, we're just getting started. You could get into DeviantArt's resource section because they have a lot of people who just offer it for free. And if you want something custom, you can pay them generally a pretty low fee and they can make you something custom. Yep. So check out DeviantArt's resource category. So, and then every person has their own stock rules, so be sure to read those before you grab something too. So, yeah, check out DeviantArt. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, iStock. iStock has good. Just mm. all sorts of images. Yeah. You checked that one or? No, I haven't. I haven't. Okay, yeah. Well, I saw it. You go to Flickr and type in Creative Commons. Mm -hmm. Again, each one has <laughs> one rules, but there's a ton of stuff out there. Cool. Uh, okay, so questions, I think. Who had one up here? Mm. Right? You first. Okay, you first. <laughs> um, how do you decide what to, like, the price of your services or your art? Ah, the age-old question. That, that's a whole other thing. Do you think it's better to put prices, general pricing on your site, or to just say contact me? Um, I like to have as much information available for people as possible just from the start. So I, I like to put prices, or at least a price range. Like, for example, you do custom work, and you're not sure if it's going to be more or less, you just put a range and say, I do this, and I also do this, and these are my price ranges for each type of customization. Like for art, I have it broken down on my commission page between illustrations and crafts and commercial use. You know, I'll, I'll put a notice saying commercial use is a little more. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> okay, great. Um, was there, did you have a question earlier? Um, I think. I don't know if there was any further info on this. Oh, well, pricing. I think that's. An, I might as well since we have time. Um, pricing is very much unique to the artist. I feel like you have to gauge your skill level. I think is the most important thing to do first is to be very honest about your skill level. Look up artists who are at your skill level and see what they are charging. See what your competition is, and um, also remember that. If something looks like you put a lot of time in it and it looks expensive, don't underprice that because people, it's all about perceived value, you know. You've got to charge what it looks like it's worth. And um, does that help? Like, it also makes a difference if you're licensing your image. Or yes. Or yes. copyright or if you're selling a company or an individual with copyright. Right. If, if you're selling a usage license, you have to make a note of that too. But um, I mean, like, what? Less to license, but if they, if they want to own the copyright, they're going to charge more. Closely. Right, and I think it differs per industry too. Like, uh, just going back to the issue of generic pricing, if you're doing crafting, I think people are perhaps more willing to pay for handicrafts because it's something you can use, and because again, a perceived value of hey, I can use this, and it's. Uh, Handcrafted. That's another uh, advantage of posting on Etsy, is that you know, it's a whole handcrafted market. So, I mean, what are you trying to price specifically? Well, I'm actually a, I'm a DJ. DJ. Kind of taking a different angle. For oh, okay, cool. Like for crafting, personally, I do a pricing scheme of, okay, this took me this many hours. I try to kind of stick in the, the you know, a minimum wage per hour, maybe like twelve bucks. And also take my material cost and multiply it by two or three, plus the hours. And then I have the price I should be charging for this, but then I go to Etsy and look at my competition and go higher or lower based on what my competition is. So it's all kind of relative. So, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Do you have like a newsletter that you email out, like the sign-ups and all that? Yes, I, I do use... Thank you. That is a super awesome topic that I should have added. Um, newsletters are a great way to keep up with people. And um, the only danger of that is that people get so much email 
that's probably why I left it off is that everyone gets so much email these days that they're just gonna be like, oh, it's more junk mail, I'm trying to sell me stuff, delete. So I or try to, folder. I focus more on instant things that I can interact with people on, but I do a quarterly newsletter just for the people who do read email. So, so do you just send that out through your email address, like you just make an email list, or do you actually like have a Service I have a service that is free, and I'm going to tell you all about it because it's the greatest service ever. It's called MailChimp, M-A-I-L-C-H-I-M-P, Chimp, and it has a chimp with a banana on it. And uh, it sounds really stupid, but it's actually this great free service where you can create your own mailing list, and it lets you monitor how many clicks you're getting on your, your newsletter, how many people are opening it, what your percentage is in comparison to other people in your industry. It also um, lets you create a template. It has an easy template maker in it. So you can make all of your emails to people customized for a holiday or for your studio with pretty artwork in it. And um, yes? Have you used uh, Emma? So I'm curious, I've used Emma a lot, and I was wondering how you got it from here. Not for saying I'm only to use but for designing things for clients or for AIG. Yeah. Spell it for Emma, me. It's just it's a uh, M M A. It's the name, the name, like there's a girl's name, Emma. I have not heard of that one. See, oh, you're just Emma's awesome. Emma. You can come up here with me. Sure. <laughs> Emma's been around for a long time. And it's natural, and it is one of the leading email marketers. Much better than constant contact, and it's very customizable, and has significant analytics on the back end, like the thing with Mailchimp, where you can just flip through and then watch and. Spent time on what. I was just wondering if, if you used Emma, just what the comparison was, because I know design agencies that were using Emma have switched over to Mailchimp, and I'm hearing a lot like Mailchimp was great and awesome. Yes. So I'll have to research that and come back. The next time I do this panel, I'll have so much more information to add to it, but I'll definitely have to check that one out. And what can you tell us about constant contact? I think that's more of a larger business thing. And you know, uh, so is Emma. And Emma, and Emma loves different subscription rates. Yes. And I think constant contact does as well. I've used constant contact once about four years ago for a client to not use it again because you, you spend a lot of time fighting with it to try to make it look like anything. Mm -hmm. um, Emma is more customizable. But there are, it's broken down, like let's say a small business, like let's say under 250, 500 people who you want to add to your list. You can e upload Excel spreadsheets. So, uh, with contacts and organize it. And so you can have different groups. Like let's is it free for constant contact? Or do you have to pay? I think that there's no, there is not free for either Emma or Constant Contact. There you they both I think they both allow for a trial. I know Constant Contact did. Right. But I'm glad you I was gonna I was interested in Mailchimp. I just didn't know Mailchimp was free. It is That's free. Like the big piece of I was aware of. There is a cap on uh, the amount of people you can have on your mailing list, but I think it's in the thousands. Oh. So it's it's pretty high. But that that's a for those of you interested in newsletter services, I can't rave enough about Mailchimp because there's just so many stats that you can look at. And um, speaking of stats, another useful tool if you want to monitor everything in your repertoire of social media or in your web pages, there's a tool called Google Analytics. And it, yes, if you have a Google account, you can just sign up for that really easily. And what you can do is set it up with a, uh, like a key that they give you. You put it on your web page, and it'll tell you how many people are visiting your page, how many of those people are new users, how many of those people, that is the, you need to stop talking now, Angela Alarm. Uh, <laughs> that is, you can also see how long people are on your website via Google Analytics. So that is a great way to monitor your websites. And um, I, any more questions real quick? Well, that was just a barrage of information. I don't want your handouts, lady. Take it. Take it now. I don't take charity.